Titanfall 2 is a very different game than the first iteration. Just because there have been significant changes from the first, is the game still bad if we pretend Titanfall 1 doesn't even exist? What if we evaluate Titanfall 2 based on its own merits instead of how seemingly any change from the original is the worst thing to have ever happened? From reading the internet, everyone's complaints and angst comes from the fact that Respawn has changed a lot of their core development philosophy from Titanfall 1. These arguments are valid, and I concede that a lot of the changes do make the game feel not as nice as Titanfall 1 in some aspects. However, the game still has all the things that made Titanfall... Titanfall. They're just different this time around. We have to be willing to accept change. It's pretty foolish to expect everything to remain exactly the same, but just get a little bit better, because that would actually make for a pretty stale experience. The formula has to be changed a little bit for things to remain fresh. The problem is that people are perceiving the formula to have changed a lot more than it actually has. Let's take a look at some of the more valid and prolific complaints. I'm not saying that you guys making these complaints are wrong or bad people or anything like that, so please don't perceive it that way. Consider this as me playing devil's advocate. I want to present the issues from a different and less emotionally charged perspective so that we may review the game in its current state in a more valid light. Titan timers are no longer on a second-by-second -second countdown. This feels bad to a lot of players because they feel like it doesn't let them get as many titans as consistently as they could previously. A lot of what's contributing to making this feel so bad to players is the lack of AI in modes that aren't bounty hunt. In reality, that only means hardpoint right now for the technical test, but that feeling isn't going to persist into release because there's going to be a lot of other game modes with AI, and that's been confirmed. That is fact as of right now. It's easy to get titans and bounty hunt in my opinion. Just focus on AI minions and you're going to have your titan in no time. Killing pilots is really just a bonus. It's not 100% about Call of Duty kill streaks like everyone on Reddit seems to think that it is, even though there are no kill streaks in this game to begin with, but whatever. How is the feeling of slow titan acquisition going to change in the full game? People need to realize that there are other ways of filling up that titan timer that isn't just killing pilots and being a great player, or a great slayer I should say. Maybe you're a little less skilled at the game, and there aren't any minions to kill, what can you do? Well, other people are probably going to be getting their titans first. Plink at them with a charge rifle, and you're getting some titan time on each hit. Repeat that note numerous times, and you're getting a titan very, very quickly. Put a battery into a friendly titan, or kill some pilots distracted by your teammates' titans. Play the objective a little bit harder, rodeo an enemy titan. Maybe you'll get your titan a little bit later than the quote-unquote better players. But when you do get yours, everyone else's titans are going to be weak, and you can mop them all up and keep map control for your own team. Holding titans has always been a strong strategy in the first titanfall, but in your case maybe you're not holding it intentionally, just getting it a little bit later, and that's okay. The argument here, and the argument with a lot of the other points I'll be bringing up, is that players simply need more time and exposure to the game. While there's a lot of complaints of Titanfall 2 putting the training wheels on, those training wheels really don't seem to be helping a lot of players out as much as they ought to be, or at least as much as the developers think they are going to be. It feels bad that the answer here might just be to get good, but I think that with a lot of these complaints that may actually be the right answer, as much as a lot of you guys don't want to hear that. But let's go back to that original question. What if Titanfall 1 didn't exist? What if this method of getting a Titan was the only way that we've ever known? Is it really all that bad? Everything that you do in the world, everything you do to help your team to participate in the game, for the most part, is helping you to get Titan time. It's helping you to charge up that Titan drop meter, or whatever the proper name for it actually is. Everything you do is helping you build it. Inherently, I don't see anything all that wrong with a system like this. Now, honestly, I do think that the original timer system may have been better, but is this change really the worst thing in the world? No, it's really not that big of a deal. I find it completely acceptable in its current state, and don't think it's such, you know, such a problem like everyone's making it out to be. There's always so much for you to do as a pilot in the game that you're never worthless without a Titan. There's always something that you can do that a Titan cannot do. Oftentimes, even if you're great at killing pilots and get the first Titan ready in the whole game, it's suicide to drop it right away since five or more pilots are going to immediately stare at you and take you out before you can even accomplish anything. Without shields, you have to be much more methodical with Titan movement, drop timings, and all those kind of things for fear of losing your Titan early and having it not be of any value to your team, except as a battery to the enemy team to get their Titan sooner. Again, if it takes longer for you to get a Titan, it's not necessarily the end of the world. It never was in Titanfall 1, and it's not the end of the world in Titanfall 2 either. It's okay. Let's move on. 
What else are people disliking about Titanfall 2? Surely the mobility system comes to mind. You move more slowly, or so it seems, with a 60 degree field of view compared to the 90 degrees that most PC players are used to, and most console players are used to watching PC players on YouTube at uh, when they're going really fast and they're watching all the really, really high mobility gameplay clips. That field of view has a huge impact on the perception of speed. Titanfall 2 is actually not that much slower than Titanfall 1 when you account for the fact that the field of view is so much smaller. Keep in mind that this will be fully customizable on PC, and we're going to be able to increase the field of view from what we have on consoles, but just keep in mind that a lot of the perceptions stem from the field of view being different. There are other changes, there are other things people are feeling, I'm not denying those things, but field of view is a lot more important than most people are giving it credit for. But anyways, in some cases, yes, you do move more slowly, Traditional bunny hopping has been neutered, you don't eject as high, and you have to use stim to uh, get any kind of a strafe eject that's even close to Titanfall 1, whether or not you use stim for that eject. The list goes on and on and on. While I do personally feel like Respawn sort of dropped the ball here, it's way too early to condemn the game. This is a conscious design decision that they've made, so we have to give them the benefit of the doubt and play it out for a little while and see how it really turns out. There is actually a modified form of bunny hopping that does exist still, but it's up to respawn as to whether or not it's going to be removed from the game or if it will remain. So, if you are not sure what that is, you can watch some other videos on my channel and you'll figure that out really quickly. But you can still go fast in this game, just not as fast as Titanfall 1. Why does that inherently make Titanfall 2 bad? It's like complaining about ADS time being slowed down by a tenth of a second and calling the game unplayable and crappy feeling. Let's put it this way, if Titanfall 1 didn't exist, Titanfall 2's movement system would be a revolutionary for COD-style aim down sights shooters. It would be such a breath of fresh air, and a really cool mix between COD and fast shooters like Quake, as loose as the comparison to Quake might actually be. You would feel free to move where you want and how you want, you could go fast if you want, or you could play slower and more tactically if you want. The system that we have in Titanfall 2 is not by any means bad, slow, heavy, or unfun. It's just that it's not as fast as Titanfall 1's, and that annoys a lot of people. That's literally the entire argument. It's not as fast as Titanfall 1, therefore it's trash. I'm not convinced that that's very fair. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm complaining about the low speeds that I'm perceiving anyways, because of low field of view and other things, more than a lot of other people that I've seen. But you've got to recognize uh, where that angst is coming from, and it's misplaced. The disappointment's gonna fade, New mobility options are going to be discovered, slide hopping, or rather G-slides if you've played Black Ops 3, have been discovered. Um, hell, Respawn might even help us out by making an attaining speed a little bit easier. Again, this is a thing where we're going to have to come back and reevaluate once the final game is released and any changes to the mobility system are made. I think we're on a much better path than people realize and give Respawn credit for. We're not in the dark times that a lot of people claim that we're in. Finally, I'll bring up one last topic that everyone's raving about, and that's the time to kill. In my experimentation, I don't believe that time to kill is the problem. It's actually, for the most part, completely fine as it is, with the exception of amped weapons being ridiculous. It's not even that different from Titanfall 1. The real problem with time to kill, in my opinion, actually stems from a combination of the game looking and feeling slower in a lot of ways, players not being as good and not being as mobile as they were before because they're not used to it, and aim assist on controllers not being adjusted to match the overall slower movement. This might seem a little weird of an argument to people, so let me explain, just hear me out. Aim assist is intended to help a player to keep their reticule on target. Joysticks are inherently inaccurate. They've got some slop that's not really possible to shake. Aim assist should only be strong enough to assist a player in tracking the fastest moving, hardest to hit target in the game. That's it, it should not do any more than that. In Titanfall 1, strong aim assist was needed because pilot speeds reach ridiculous levels very quickly, despite the fact that their movement was very linear while going fast. They weren't, you know, like bending in the air. They were going in relatively straight lines with easy to predict curves uh, here and there as they're strafing. Even if they're moving at a high velocity perpendicular to you in Titanfall 1, they weren't hard to track. You just had to move your aim quickly. But, you know, tracking them up and down was not a big deal. In Titanfall 2, the movement speed has been dropped pretty significantly, or so it seems to a lot of players. If that's actually true kind of remains to be seen, but that's what everyone's perception is right now. However, aim assist benefits have not been mitigated to compensate for this lack in speed. 
So the end result is that the game is doing way too much work for the player, and everyone feels punished for even trying to apply any mobility techniques because they just get instantly locked onto and killed with minimal input from the shooter. In this regard, I feel people are complaining about the symptom more than the disease itself, and that disease is the strength of aim assist in its current state. Tone that down a little bit from where it's at right now, and we're going to be looking at a much healthier game on console, especially in relation to the hipfire SMGs actually being literal lasers in their current states. If you guys haven't tried out the car or the alternator yet, give it a shot as soon as you can. Never ADS with it ever for any reason, except at supremely stupidly long ranges. The hipfire is that good. I'm not exaggerating. Trust me. Using the car is identical to using the EM-1 and Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. The only problem is that the aim assist in this game feels stronger than aim assists uh, in Advanced Warfare was, especially at hipfire. The car and alternator are literally better than an EM-1 when hipfired on a controller right now. It's disgusting. It's actually disgusting. Fix this problem respawn and you've got an even more great game on your hands. In conclusion, guys, Titanfall 2 is a very great game at this point. Sure, it's not Titanfall 1. Sure, it might not even spiritually feel like the successor because of how many big changes have been made to the core formula. I get all of these arguments, but you can't deny that this is still one of the best shooters out there right now. And there's nothing else in this class that's even any good. Like, this game scratches an itch that only Lawbreakers and Call of Duty can hope to come close to. And I wholly recommend that you give the full version a try when it launches on October 28th of this year. Thanks everyone for watching. I love all of you. This video has not been sponsored or influenced by Respawn or EA in any way. They're not giving me any money or anything like that. There's no, you know, no influence by them. This is all 110% my own opinions and thoughts on the game. So please, guys, no accusations in the comments if you don't mind. Uh, I love all of you. I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.